Welcome to Knitting Step by Step, the video podcast that's been teaching you how to knit. I'm your host, Jason Block. And I'm your knitting instructor, Ivy Reisner. Now, this is episode 16, Blocking Lace. Now, Ivy, why don't you explain what happened on the last file with the kind of iffy sound issues? Yeah, we had some sound issues. I'm still trying to track what happened. The file will play on your computer with sound, no problem. It will play in iTunes with the sound without a problem, but converting it for the iPod loses sound. I'm still looking into why this is going on, but I've been looking into it for a while and we've decided to just go ahead with the next episode while I try to get that fixed. All right, so if you remember, last time we were working on a lace scarf that should look something like this. All curled up and not very scarf-like. Yeah, and... exactly. So we got it looking something like this. And Lace does this. Lace is known for curling. Lace oh. is known for not laying right. Lace is known for being a problem about that. So that's why we're going to take a look at blocking this time. You mean the, the procedure named after me? Yes. Okay. So why do we actually block lace? We block for three reasons. One, it'll improve your stitch definition. You'll see the pattern in the lace better. Two, it will make it lay flat. And three, if there's been anything that causes uneven gauge in your stitches, maybe you've dropped a stitch and picked it up again, lace will, uh, blocking will cause that all to even out and lay nicely. It will even out your stitches. It makes your piece look better. You can also block anything, you can block anything, and you can block garments to a specific measurement so that they will fit together better. And you said something about stockinette starch, st uh, the stockinette stitching and blocking? Yes, if you, you, if you block stockinette stitch, it will actually lay flat. It'll end the curl problem. Very cool, very cool. So what do we need to block lace? First, you need something to pin it to. I use a display board. I get it at an office supply store. Pretty solid. Pretty solid, pretty simple. It's not waterproof. It will start to warp and to be damaged after maybe about... 10 uses, but they're really inexpensive. I just get a new one. You can build one if you want to. You get yourself a nice piece of wood. At your local Home Depot or lumber store. You staple um, towels to it to absorb moisture. And then you get a piece of gingham cloth. Gingham. Gingham cloth. I can never pronounce that. And you lay it because that will give you nice grid lines. And you staple that on. You'll have a beautiful blocking board. But if you want to keep it simple, just get a display board, use it about 10 times and throw it out when you're done. Right. Second thing you need are these bad boys, which are pins. Now, very, very, very important. They have to be rust proof because you do not want rust on your projects. You had a very bad, bad incident with that, didn't you? Yes, I finished all of my swatches for the Knitting Masters and locked them out with just whatever pins I could find and ruined almost all of them because rust was all around the edges. I'm not doing that again. Rust proof pins. Yes, and you can get them at your any knitting store, any knitting supply store. And Final. the quilting stores will have it too. Right. Finally, this is not a cat shelfer offer. <laughs> this is a squirt bottle. Any water, any squirt bottle will do and you fill it with water. What you do is you set it to the mist setting, not the stream. You don't want to fire a ton of water on this thing. What you want to do, you'll be misting the project. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and show you how we actually block lace. We have your scarf on your board, blocking board. Tell me what you're going to do. Okay, I'm just going to spritz it a little bit. I want to dampen it, but I don't want to get it very wet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pinning it right into the shape that I want. I'm going to have the pins hold it into place. Okay. And it's... Now, how many pins should you use depending on what project you um, as are doing? As many as it takes to make it take the form that you want. If you're going to do something with sharp edges, as some shawls have, you may want to pin out the edges separately. There are other options for blocking. You could use blocking wires. You could use blocking. You could put a string around and hold it all out with a string if mm -hmm. you want to. This is just the simplest thing. Okay. And I'm not going to have room on a board this size to block the whole right. scarf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to block what I have room to block. And then when it's ready, I'm going to block the next part of it and just work my way down. 
And in this way, I can block very large things in a very small space. Now I have a question for you. How long does it take for this thing to block, per se? Oh, that depends a lot upon your climate. If you live in Florida, you can expect that it'll be done sometime next week. If you live in Arizona, you can expect it's going to be done probably by the time you finish watching the video. It's the drier the air, the sooner it'll dry, is what it comes down to. Okay. I remember doing watercolors in Arizona. It was very odd. Now, you said to me, and again, this may not um, make a few of your knitting friends happy on this webpage, uh, the podcast, excuse me, that uh, you don't like doing this. I hate blocking. I have no problem weaving an end, and a lot of people don't like weaving an end. This doesn't bother me. I hate blocking. Blocking is just... Any particular reason why? I don't know. I just don't like it. It's... Well... well you know where to send the hate mail, guys. <laughs> That's Ivy at knittingstepbystep.com, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was tempted while I was still entertaining the idea of doing um, a knit along that had this massive, massive, like nine foot shawl. I was tempted if I knit it that I was just going to take it when it was done to the local dry cleaner and ask them to press it for me. <laughs> You want to face that. Now, as you can see, uh, oh, you're going to get that last section too? Yeah, it's this last section right here, yep. Okay. Now, for a climate, now we're in New York in a pretty warm apartment. How long would this particular thing take to dry? I'm going to leave it overnight. It should be done by morning. Some people are going to tell you that you should put a towel under it. You can certainly do that if you want to. Some people will tell you that if you put a towel under it, it'll block oddly. The towel will warp it and you shouldn't do that. It really doesn't. You can get away with it if you want to. My kitten is now curious with what I'm trying to do. And, so, and I don't have him in the shot. Oh, there we are. There he is. That is Hikari, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. I'll say hello, Hikari. Yes, 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 there you are. But, uh... <laughs> so I'm just working through making sure I don't have any puckered in areas. And you can just take a look at this part of the scarf where I haven't really done any blocking. Right. And now take a look at where I have blocked. And you can see the definition of the stitches is much clearer. Right. And you can see that it is actually lengthened and the curl is pretty much out. Yep. And all I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to let it sit there. And tomorrow I'm going to go, I'm going to pull out the pins and do the next section. That is all there is to blocking. It is a terribly simple process.